How can a book that was written by 40 different people can be the word of God? There is no doubt about it. It can be the world's all-time best-selling book, but how could it be the word of God? No time to waste, let's plunge right in. God employed 40 people to write his book. Peoples like peasants, tax collectors, fishermen, philosophers, poets, farmers, and kings. All those people lived on different continents. They never met and they spoke different languages. They wrote 66 books of the Bible. And what's really cool is that every book tells one big story that's all connected. Those people were regular folks and not all of them were writers. Some didn't know they were writing the Bible. God communicated with them by dream and vision and even came to the prophets and even told them to write word for word. So what makes the Bible the word of God? There are a lot of reasons within the Bible and outside the Bible. Let's get into it. One, prophecies. The Bible contains hundreds of prophecies about the future of various cities, nations, the world and all mankind. There are over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament that have already been fulfilled and that haven't been fulfilled yet. There is no other religious book with the amount of detailed prophecies in the Bible. Two, power and authority. The Bible holds incredible power and authority in our world. The impact and influence that it brought into this world is beyond belief. Its influence has changed countless lives for the better. Think about it. Drug addicts have found a way out of their addictions. People struggling with homosexuality have been set free by it. Criminals have turned their lives around and have been reformed by it. Sinners rebuked by it, hate turned into love by it, and so on. Before I go ahead and explain how moral arguments make the Bible the word of God, let me ask you a question. Do you believe rape is wrong? Do you believe killing people is wrong? Is it wrong to torture babies for fun? Is slavery wrong? Do you believe cheating on your partner is wrong? So when it comes to those questions, if you tick the box on yes, it's wrong, especially with no time to think, congratulations. Now you really believe the Bible is the word of God, but you just don't want to admit it. Let me explain. We took those standards from the Bible. Your government didn't give you these standards for the first time. They applied it. I know some people say, of course, those things are wrong. It's common sense. You just know what is wrong from what is right. But guess what? If it wasn't for God, those things would be a matter of opinion. They would just be your opinion against the rapist's opinion, your opinion against the killer's opinion, or slaveholder, or cheater's opinion. The other one is the Bible's indestructibility. To start off, for those unfamiliar with the term indestructibility, it basically means not being able to be destroyed. The Bible has suffered many more attacks through history to destroy it than any other book, from the Roman Empire like Dio Seltian, communist dictators, and modern day atheists. Just to list a few of the attackers from the Bible, Antiochus Epiphanes, he was the king of the Seleucid Empire in 175 BC, who is known for his brutal persecution of the Jews. He burned all the scriptures he could find and declared death to all owners of the Bible. Yet, the Bible survived. The Roman Emperor Diocletian in 301 AD, he commanded all the Bibles to be destroyed and commanded that any home with a Bible in it should be burned. And they burned thousands of copies of the Bible. He then proudly proclaimed the Christian name has been extinguished. Yet, the Bible survived. Robert G. Ingersoll, Lewis Wallace, the Soviet government, and so on are the other attackers from political movements in the 18th century. They proclaimed that in 15 years, they would have the Bible under the ground. 15 years later, they were the ones who were found under the ground. Yet, the Bible survived. Even though attacks are coming primarily from political movements, psychologists, scientific studies, and so on, it remains just as true for us today as it was written for the first time. Yet still, it's the most widely published book in human history. In Mark 13, 31, the scripture itself says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. First Peter chapter one, Verse 24 and 25 says, because all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass, the grass withers and the flowers fall away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. If we're to humanize the concepts of those Bible verses, let's not forget what Theodore Beza, the sixth century Swiss theologian said about the Bible. The Bible is an anvil that has broken many hammers. It all comes down to this. We cannot understand all that the scriptures reveals, but what we understand is the Bible is the only accurate source of knowledge about God and faith in him. So the simplest way of putting this is, the Bible is the verbal inspired word of God and the record of the word of God.